All right, guys, so we're doing something a little bit different today. My buddy linked me an article. It was like 50 best free-to-play games. And uh, so we're going to play through them, or the ones I find interesting at least. In the bottom in the comments, or in the description, I'll leave a link to the game that we're playing and to the article. So, yeah, let's start with my father's long, long legs. The reason we got the webcam and the lighting's off and all that is for the horror aspect. I hope it has sound effects, but I don't know. Parts of this game make use of sound effects, please, with that. Okay, cool. Oh, God, reading's hard. My family lived on the southern edge of a certain Midwestern industrial city in an old house, old enough that its basement still had a dirt floor. I was not yet old enough to openly question a parent's behavior, but certainly old enough to recognize its oddness when my father began digging. Digging. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I retain only a single clear memory of the time before the situation, it's so eerie with like no sound going on, became alarming and my father forsook sunlight forever. What the fuck? Okay. I am sitting at the bottom of the wooden stairs that led down to our basement. Ahead in the dimness stands my father up to his waist in the hole. Not the hole. Anything but the hole. Still in his dark blue uniform from the factory, skin and fabric, blackened by the hot breath of machinery, and further smudged now by the damp earth. I watch father with the satisfaction of a child who sees in her parent a well of limitless capability. That's a weird way to explain your parent, but okay. Cool. Upstairs, my mother called out that dinner is done. Dinner's ready! <laughs> my father takes one last shovel of earth, turns it over the side of his excavation, and in a single incredible motion crawls out of the hole simply by pressing his the sole of his boot to the lip of the pit and moving his whole body upward walking right past me walking right past me right up the stairs dang you got ignored son you feel bad feels bad he was always tall and a oh, he was always a tall angular man as the remaining pictures of him suggest and to this day, I can clearly conjure the marvelous image of my father's long, long legs striding over me as he emerged from the hole he was to keep, spend years digging beneath our house. Interesting. Apart from him, there were three of us. My mother, my younger brother, and myself. What happens? There are many things about my mother I do not understand. She first found my father attractive. She admitted to me this to she admitted to me many years later because of how unusual he was. Okay. He had come to, does it matter which one I pick? Okay. He had come to mid Western industrial town and secured a job in the same factory where my mother was working. Though a practical man, he had, he read constantly and voraciously in subjects ranging, ranging from engine repair to philosophy, a habit instilled in him I wonder how long the story is. He had claimed by his own parents. All right. This was all my father ever said of his family behind us. Any further inquiry into the subject caused him to leave the room or bring up some pressing issue. Mother once theorized that father had run away from home. <laughs> Whatever his reasons for leaving his family behind, my father did not wait too long before beginning a new one. I was born only a few months after my parents were married. Okay, cool. Within a few years, father had made enough money that my mother could stay home and watch over me and not too long after my brother, and not too long after my brother. Oh, okay, cool. That was messing me up for some reason. Then one night when my brother was perhaps only a year old, father came home pulled a brand new shovel from the back of his pickup truck and descended into the basement where he began to dig. Not the digging, anything but the digging. At first he told mother that he was preparing to d put down a cement floor, suggesting a prelude to a full or partial renovation of the house. As a child, the movements of adults were still largely mysterious to me, and I don't do not know the specific circumstances under which mother's realized which mother's I uh, realize this motive was untrue. I don't know if that's correct or not. <laughs> Nor do I know exactly what transpired when father told mother that they must go into the basement to discuss the matter closer to its source. 
For after the door shut behind them, my brother and I were left alone in the house. And then he murdered her. My brother cried most of the night while I lay in my bed. Pillows pressed to my ears. The next day, my mother reappeared, quietly prepared our meals, and then locked herself in the bedroom shortly before father returned home and commenced digging once again. Oh, this is not a very interesting story. This is like holes, but like one hole. <laughs> God dang, my father, for his part, stopped sleeping in the bedroom with her, instead taking to the basement, a decision which co coincided with the first signs of his terrible metamorphosis. He's a butterfly. Ain't that what butterflies do? Don't they metamorphosize or some shit? Okay. The changes were slow, but noticeable. Father began to grow paler. He is a butterfly, I'm calling it. And by the time the factory closed and he could spend the whole day in the basement, he was as white as chalk. Perhaps it was the general evidence of where the change in skin tone and his subsequent emaciation that made him look taller as if his height increased in proportion to the depth of his project in the basement. Oh, it's a slender man. Maybe it's a slender man. Slender man, butterfly. Meanwhile, my mother put my brother into preschool. We need some music or something. <laughs> and sent me to a latch key. It's going to jump scare me or something. Me to a latch key program while we worked to support us. While she worked to support us. In what seemed a deliberate contrast to my father. She grew somehow darker and smaller. Oh my god, he's still in her height. And her paleness. <laughs> Weird. My father dug uninterrupted in the basement for at least a decade, and once I started high school, he did not even leave the basement to join us for dinner. Then my mother left him. Father was sufficiently enveloped in his life's task that there was no need to replay the arguments from my childhood. Whatever desire he had once had to keep us home with, with him had apparently fallen away, lost in the depths of that pit. On her own, mother seemed to be to physically decompress, to become less bowed, so she spoke more, laughed more, she had friends and lovers. We did not see my father at all after we left. On the day we left for, the g for good, he did not even come out of the basement, though by that point it was questionable how easily he could get through the doorway. So tall he had grown. What the f It was questionable how easily he could get through the doorway. It was not until many years later that my brother suggested we pay a return visit to our father's house. Uh, this is where it gets... Needless to say, my brother and I had different experiences of our early home life. <laughs> we have decisions. Boom. My brother was young enough... Oh my god, it's... Okay. My brother was young enough when my father began digging that it seemed to him an indifferent fact of life. It seemed obvious to me that something was wrong with our home. The wrongness was screamed, I thought, by the chilly terseness with which, I don't know if this is a game, this is more like a novel, with which our mother moved through it, returning home from work in the late afternoon, serving meals and retiring to her bedroom. The wrongness was screamed, of course, by my father who had, who after losing his job in the factory, spent all day in the basement, emerging at regular intervals to eat, irregular intervals to eat and use the toilet. This is not to say nothing of the physical changes he underwent as time went on. The wrongness we screamed by my own actions, the heavy worry I felt that at any moment the fragile equilibrium of our home would be upset and my brother's friends would witness the terrifying truth of our family situation, a situation I myself could not begin to articulate, but which I felt ashamedly that an outsider would. Of course, my brother, young as he was, saw nothing wrong with inviting his friends to our home and even taking them down to the basement to see what he called, after our father's example, I believe, the renovations. The renovations. It has quotation marks. You gotta say it like that. The friends never asked to return to the basement after my brother took them down there. Some of them quietly designed, deigned to never return to our house at all. Much to my relief, though my brother was often disappointed. He said that he's part of the whole monster scheme. I recall only one instance where my brother was perhaps seven and one of his playmates made a scene. I believe my father, brother's friend came from a religious family, which may have been part of the problem, but that may also be something I recognize only due to my biases, own biases, <laughs> biases, 
at any <laughs> rate, though his cosmology was different from my own, he at least shared some of my anxieties when he attempted to explain to my brother that our father's project in the basement was deeply unnatural. <laughs> I don't know why I keep reading it. I emerged from the living room because down the hall I could hear crying. I knew that my brother had a friend over and so was prepared for the worst. The two boys stood over the outside the door to the basement, which still stood open. My brother looked up as I approached and at, at a loss as to how to comfort his weeping companion. You're going to hell, our visitor informed me. After I managed to get him to look at me, that's where he's digging to down there. <laughs> I don't know if Sling Blade's the right place for a Whatever, Child said, <laughs> looking from me to my brother, he's digging to hell, and you're all going with him. My brother did not invite as many classmates over after that day, and I don't believe he ever invited any of them down to see the renovations ever again. Are we really going to hell? He asked me one night, lying beside me in the bed. After a nightmare sent him into my room, I told him I did not know. <laughs> but is that where Dad is digging to? He asked. I told him there was no such place. And why is Dad digging? In the early days, when I sat on the stairs and watched him work, my father had given me dozens of flippant reasons for his project. Seeking dinosaur bones, all of these excuses had less currency by this point. Of course, and when asked what he was doing, as my brother told me, his religious religious visitor had inquired. My father had other things to say. This is not the real world, my father would say. Or something along those lines. What we think is the real world is just a layer of dirt caked around the true core of the universe. And what is the dirt? Inert matter, dead weight. The remains of those who came and went before us, content only to further press down upon the creation with their waste. There was a time when human beings were giants walking upon a small earth, but now the earth has grown fat and hateful with our soil, while we have grown small. Starting here, I was scraping around away the sediment, our coagulated filth, and returning us to our original glory. That's why he's getting taller. I assembled this manifesto from memory. From various iterations and variations Father offered us over the years, and certainly it was the sort of heresy that had offended my brother's erstwhile friend. Still, they were not satisfactory answers to us then, and would not be satisfactory for my brother as he huddled fearing hell in my bed. In my bed. But frankly, I had no answer to, for him and let the matter lapse into silence. Which is perhaps why all these years later, he urged me to come back with him. Back to our father's house. Of course, my experiences played a part in my eventual decision. A year or so before we left my father, the last time I ventured down into the basement. Basement! <laughs> my brother was out with friends. Having reached the age when he finally realized the awkwardness that resulted from bringing visitors to our home, and mother had locked the door to our room and apparently gotten to bed, father was, of course, laboring in the basement, and I was doing homework. In the living room while watching television, there came a knock at the door. Knock, knock, knocking at heaven's door. Oh, oh. Okay. The man on the porch was squat, but dressed neatly in a suit, a coat, and a hat. A pair of very small spectacles was per perched on the end of his nose, looking minuscule in comparison to his large round face. Well, hello, young lady, he said to me in a labored voice. Is your father home? Who are you? The man tipped his old-fashioned head back on his head, smiling with rubbery lips. You would have no reason to know me, of course, he said. But I'm your uncle. I left the man on the porch. The door locked while I went to seek my mother's help. Thus I discovered she was unresponsive as she often was in those days. This left me with the only option to summon my father from the basement. He did not respond when I opened the door and yelled down, though I thought I could hear faintly the sound of his digging. I looked back to the front door where I could see through pebbled glass the rotund figure of the man who claimed to be my uncle and descended the wooden stairs into the basement. 
The only light, as always, came from a single bulb hanging from the ceiling. My father had learned to operate in these conditions, but for me, the lack of illumination cast the labyrinth below into a mess of confusing and seemingly contradictory paths of damp black earth and only slightly blacker shadow. Father had first attempted to dig straight down, but as the years went on, he elaborated his original plans, angling outward from the center of the basement at a depth of perhaps 15 feet. From there, he had begun to hollow out the entirety of the basement with one long looping path, threaded and bent around itself like some monstrous length of viscera, all this while continuing his march downward. I stood on the bottommost stair, that, as I thought of it, still properly belonged to our house. By my feet was a stack of unfamiliar books. They were old, with blank but wrapped, warped brown covers. Next to them was that what appeared to be an antique ch child's rattle, caked with dirt, and several rocks chipped into various unnatural but vaguely instrumental shapes. I turned to the void and called for my father. No response came. But I grew more certain that I could hear, however distantly, the sound of Father's shovel. I called for him again, this time giving also my purpose for interrupting his work. There's a man at the door, I, I said. He says he's my uncle. I stood and waited, and as I did so, the sound of digging stopped. My father emerged a minute later, unfolding himself from the narrow bends of the maze, his spell skin covered only by the rags of his clothing, and everywhere dusted gray with soil, including, I noted, the corner of his mouth, which seemed stained particularly thoroughly, and much more darkly, like he's eating it. Your uncle, Father rumbled, not quite asking a question, then he added, My brother. I nodded. Show him in. Squat stronger stranger, my uncle, who I remembered smelled of sour milk, seemed elated at his prospects. I led him down to the basement, Stairs, his agitation growing exponentially until he saw my father standing at his full height. Must have been at least eight or nine, ten, eight or nine feet then, I think, at the entrance of his renovations. I knew to take my leave, and as I ascended the stairs, I heard the visitor remark that my father seemed to have done, oh, you've done very well for, for himself, all things considered. I never again saw the man who claimed to be my uncle neither the day or the day, any day after. Perhaps not coincidentally, this was also my last clear memory of my father, and the one that returned to me many years later, when my f brother suggested we return to our father's house. It seemed my brother wanted to put his mind at ease. I thought there was going to be sound effects in this game, my goodness. Mind at ease by <laughs> checking up on our father, who had been left alone now for slightly longer than we had Leave, live with him. Oh, I'll just put in some sound in the editing, I guess. On the other hand, on one hand, I appreciated my brother's sentiment. Even if I felt it was misplaced, on the other hand, I knew I could not stop him. His feelings toward father had always been more lenient. The only question was, would I go along with him? Or would I let him make the visit on his own? We're going with him. After all the crap we've read, we're going. <laughs> we decided upon a day to visit our childhood home, where we assumed our father lived. But decided to meet the, there one afternoon the following week. There must have been some, must have somewhere been a miscommunication. I was late. I must have been late. The alternative is that for his own purposes, my brother arrived early to see our father before I did, and I did not wish to contemplate why that would be. The town was considerably less industrial than it had been, though the taste of industry still laced our water and air. The old neighborhood, not the most affluent, even in the former times, had fallen into further despair. The houses up and down the block stood weathered and it seemed empty. Sidewalks buckled around thick protrusions of sickly weeds which reached out into the pothole street, protruding fingers of the overgrown lawns. The only sign of habitation was a single car, my brother's car, parked outside our home, our old home. The doors were locked and the windows rolled up. A hand pressed to the hood told me it was not warm, but apart from that, I had no way of guessing how long the vehicle had been there unattended. Ahead, the house waited. It seemed not much different from the rest of the building, scraped down to gray bones by the elements. The windows were gone, 
without even slivers of glass remaining, and the porch had bowed and now held a stagnant pool of rain rainwater. The <laughs> front door stood open at an angle, its lowermost hinge having rusted and snapped in two. Hmm. Stepping carefully onto the rotten porch, I t too many ex you describing things too much, <laughs> I think. I slipped inside and found myself in the old living room, the floor was littered with trash and chunks of plaster can drop from the ceiling. The television was gone, though a lighter patch in the shredded wallpaper marked its former location. The couch had collapsed and now seemed covered with mud, with mounds of, not mud, with mounds of some sort of gray mold or fungus. Ahead was the central hallway of the house, and I could see that the door to the basement had been wholly removed. Yeah, who needs a door if you're just going to be living in there? I called out to my brother's name, I called out my brother's name, and then stood for a moment, looking down into unremitting darkness. Of course the power was out. It was probably disconnected long ago, but a flashlight lay on the floor just outside the base mansion. How convenient. My brother's flashlight seemed quite new. I flicked it on and pointed it down the basement, but it penetrated far enough only to reveal the floor of the stairs. I called my brother's name again and waited. There was still no response. Da da da. Assuming the basement was anything like as I had last seen it, my brother could have easily gotten hurt if he went down this without his flashlight. He must have been lying down there just beyond the stairs, unconscious. I had to make sure. Flashlight ready. I went into the basement. Here we go, boys. Uh-oh. Something beneath my feet. Oh, what the fu- Okay. The stairs creaked beneath my feet. Oh, we're getting some gameplay? I reached the bottom. When my flashlight returned, only a slope heading deeper beneath the house. I'm kind of scared though. I don't like how this is working. I knew my father had qu done quite a bit of work in the decades since we left. God damn it. Do I have to scroll? Oh shit. I'm gonna see something I don't want to see. I'm sure of it. Oh fuck. Sucks. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling slowly. It might not look like I'm scrolling but I'm definitely doing it. Ah, oh, this is such bullshit. Wait, I'm at the bottom. Is that the end? Oh, I gotta click that. I was about to say motherfucker. <laughs> I was about to be real pissed, I'm telling you. Oh, that's so easy. You had I, I didn't know I had to click that. Let's see if it's up here. Okay. I went down, I called for my brother. I walked to the left, I walked to the right. And I did it all night. <laughs> Chuck. Whatever. All of my own breathing echoed back through the chambers of something, of barren earth. I walked further into the darkness. Oh, my flashlight sucks. I called for my brother again. I turned right. The musty smell of old earth filled my nostrils. Oh, what's the flashlight? Okay. <laughs> Around me there was nothing but darkness. I don't like this. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that out there. Oh, it's making noise. <laughs> Is that coming through my headset or my... Wait a second. Oh, wait a second. Okay, there we go. Oh, I hate that. I walked forward. I called for my brother again and received no answer. <sighs> okay. I followed the sound of digging. The path branched left and right. Don't fucking kill me. Was I going in circles? How would I even be able to tell? I followed the sound of digging. I took a downward sloping path to the left. I called my brother's name. In the distance, the sound of shoveling did not break its rhythm, as if the digger did not know or care I was there. I followed the sound of digging. I walked further into the darkness. This is awful. I called for my brother again. I followed the sound of digging. I turned right. I, I already did that. And around me, there was nothing but dusting. Dark, nothing but darkness. I found the sound of digging. I followed the sound of digging. Was I going in circles? How would I even be able to tell? I followed the sound of digging. I took a downward slope to the left. I called my brother's name. In the distance. It's the same thing over and over again. What am I supposed to do? Shoveling did not move. The digger did not. I followed the sound of digging. I've walked further into the darkness. Maybe I got hit something different. Let's do this. I turn right. Was I going in circles? How would I even be able to tell? I followed the sound of digging. 
All right, let's just follow the sound of digging. Fuck it. How long have I been down here? I turned right. I followed the sound of digging. I followed the sound of digging. Uh, the pass my father had eaten through the door er, stretched out in all directions. There was no sign of my brother. Let's just keep following the sound of digging. Oh, baby. Don't do it to me. Don't do it. Oh, uh, this is You Are My Sunshine. It's kind of creepy. How much I love you. Don't fucking do it to me. Here it comes. <sighs> God damn it. I don't know why I did this to myself. I did not find my brother. Jump scared. I do not know what to tell our mother. I do. Oh, thank God. I do not know where to go from here, what to do. It is true I gave up on my search. But once I saw what lived there, had been living there for all these years, or more precisely what had grown there, I ran from the basement. Smart. He made his decision. Somehow by my own luck or by some other's design, I made it out of the darkness a lot. Darkness, though my brother has not. There's a chance, I think, that he may still be alive. My guilt is heavily. Do not doubt that. My guilt is heavy, not heavily. Do not doubt that, but it is outweighed by the fear I experienced when I came face to face with that terrible result of my father's attempted renovations of a rotated world. It's gonna jump scare me. I once told my brother there was no such place as hell. I still believe that to be true. God damn it. But wherever my brother is now. God. What is that thing's fucking leg? I wonder if he's grown as tall as our father. Look at them fucking legs, holy shit. My father's long, long legs. Oh, Whew, that was, it did get scary though. My palms are so sweaty. Uh, my father's long, long legs. A twi twine game by Michael Lutz. Website Twitter, much JavaScript by Leon Ernott. Flashlight effects from here. Original shovel sound effects by O Worm. Special thanks to Victor and Spam for better reading. Inspirations Emily Carroll, Ju Junji Ito, Thomas Ligotti, Bruno Scholes. So yeah, I'm gonna try to make my way through this game. This is kind of like the bottom of the list. I think it's like game 48. I'll post the article in the bottom. And uh, thanks again to my friend Riley for letting me know about it. Epic Pac-Man, if you watch uh, Twitch, it's like X Epic X Pac-Man or something crazy like that. But, yeah, thanks for watching as always. If you could, please like and subscribe. Bye! Phew. Oh, man, I sweat. That scared me. <laughs> I'm so worried it was going to jump scare me. <laughs> Goodness.